Okay, this video is going to be about the com a comparison between the strengths and weaknesses of Shotokan Karate, Tung Sudo, and American Karate. Now, what I want to explain is that I'm not saying any one of these martial arts is better than any other, okay? It always comes down to the martial artist, not the martial art. However, what I want to point out is this. Okay, with after reading the uh, Karate Do Kaiohan, I remembered that in Shotokan Karate, unlike in Tung Sudo or American Karate, for some reason they keep their hands at around their chest or belly level when they're fighting, as opposed to keeping them up by their head so they can guard their face and you know neck and all their vital striking points. Um, this is a bad idea in, in fighting because you can get clocked pretty easy. And I know what people are saying, well, in real life, you're not going to know that you're getting in a fight and you're not going to have your hands up when somebody attacks you. While this might be true, it's also true once you know you're engaged in combat to put your hands up to guard your your center line, you know, so that you're not getting, um, you know, so the person has a harder time getting you in a vital area, okay? So that's one difference. The other thing I would say is um, with Shotokan, the thing is they do only kick from the belly down, which I actually see mostly as a positive, but to quote Chuck Norris, you should be able to kick wherever you want to kick. That's something that you should be able to do. So in the Korean martial arts like Tung Soo Do, we not only kick low, medium, we also kick high into the head. That's a positive in the sense that if you need to kick somebody in the head, you can do it with Korean martial arts, but you have to know what you're doing. Okay, now what do I mean by American Karate? I would consider what I learned to be American Karate, not Tung Soo Do, because it wasn't taught in the traditional Tung Soo Do uh, format. The other thing is it incorporates, a lot of people don't understand this, with Tung Soo Do and a lot of other things, when you have an American instructor, a lot of the first-generation American instructors, not the Asian guys, not the Koreans or the Japanese, but the Americans, they had taken numerous different martial arts and also military-style combat while in the military. And they blended all these things together. A lot of it is, uh, they interchange, like, a shuto chop is, shuto is the Japanese for karate chop, okay? Suto is Korean. We use shuto at the dojang I went to, which means the school. So, shuto means, you know, karate chop. Now, the thing is, a lot of these, this first generation of American instructors blended things like military-style combat, judo, karate, wrestling, boxing. These things are all blended into what is called American karate, because karate was a catch-all term for all of these systems. So I consider there to be a lot of advantages to American karate and a lot of disadvantages. The one main disadvantage is American karate had brought in a lot of um, different concepts of non-traditional training. Okay, now the reason I'm bringing this up is the Hyungs, Kata, and uh, Hyungs and Kata are forms. These are ideal for conditioning the body for martial arts. They move the body and stretch every part of the body in every direction that it can be stretched and strengthened, okay? That is the idea of a, of a form. Now, people think they look pretty, they look like this, but if you're doing a form properly, you are putting the strength into the techniques, you are putting the speed into the techniques, and you are stretching your body from the stances to the way your arms are moving. Like, for example, you're not really technically going to block in real life. As, as I've stated in, um, in a lot of uh, combat-oriented things, you don't block, you attack. You parry, you move around, things like that. But these blocks, they stretch the lats. They stretch the muscles of the upper body. That's what they do. And you might use them, who knows. But the point is, these forms condition the body to fight. That's what they do. With the one-step sparring, a lot of people don't understand this, but this is through muscle memory. One-step sparring conditions the, the body and the mind to fight. That's what it does. Um, so what I'm saying is a lot of people that rely on non-traditional means of conditioning, such as weightlifting too much or running too much or things of this nature, and not focusing on martial arts as their primary means of conditioning, 
um, they're losing a lot. They're losing a lot of that, uh, the, the agility, the stretch. That's what I said is I still practice, um, and I've, I've gotten back into conditioning myself through primarily martial arts because I had to drop the weights and things like that because of what was happening due to the stress in my heart. So I went back into martial arts. Um, I do that pretty much every day now. Now, but what I was going to say is I'm 36. I can still hit stretches and kick over my head better than most 15-year-old boys. So my point is, as a 36-year-old man that does karate, I'm more flexible than your average teenage uh, boy because of the fact that I do uh, take my flexibility seriously. Um, and that's something that a lot of people do not take seriously. Also, strength with range of motion is a big thing that happens through karate that is hard to achieve with other things besides maybe gymnastics or things of that nature. But the conditioning for traditional martial arts are, one, shungs, and, okay, forms, number two, ilsu sik, and number three, traditional calisthenics, sit-ups, push-ups, um, you know, leg raises, these sorts of things. These are the go-tos for conditioning for traditional martial arts. When you start going beyond that and adding too much, it becomes overwhelming for one to keep up with such a complex conditioning, uh, conditioning uh, regimen, but it also becomes um, a waste of time and confusing to the body and the mind. Uh, a strict karate program is probably the best thing to condition oneself for karate. And it's also probably the best, because it's so set, it's easier to stick with than some other exercise programs, in my opinion.